I think we should take a quick introductory look at sculpting because that's another really fun thing that you can do inside of Blender and you can get started right away. To do that, let's go to File, New, and Sculpting. This is going to start us out with a sphere, but unlike a normal sphere, if we go to Wireframe View, then you'll see that we have a lot of geometry to work with. That's because sculpting is just pushing and pulling vertices, so we need a good amount of vertices to see what's actually going on. I'll go back to Solid View here, and on the left side of our screen we have all of our sculpting tools. In the header you'll notice that we're just in Sculpt Mode, so we could switch back to Object Mode or Edit Mode at any time. But in Sculpt Mode, we have a ton of different tools. Let's go ahead and drag out our toolbar to the right a little bit, so that we can actually see the names of them. If you get familiar with the icons, you might want to do a two-column layout so that you can see them all at the same time. But for now, I'll keep pulling this out so we can actually see what they're called. Then let's start drawing on our mesh. If we just left click and drag over a surface, then we can start drawing on it. All of these different tools are just going to push or pull vertices in one way or another. The draw tool is the most basic out of all of them. So let's look at some of the tool settings that we have here. Up at the top left, we have the radius. If we increase that, then we'll just get a bigger brush size. Pretty simple. And then the icon to the right of that is for pressure sensitivity. So if you happen to have a pen and tablet, then you can turn that on. And that's what I'm using now, but you can follow along with the mouse if you want to. If I press really lightly on my tablet, then I'll get a really small stroke. And if I press really hard, then I'll get a bigger one. But I'll turn it off for radius and just keep it on for strength. So to the right of that, we have our strength. I can set this all the way to one, get a really intense stroke, or set this really low and get something very subtle. So it's pretty intuitive. Then to the right of that, we have these plus and minus buttons. The plus button is going to push the geometry out of the mesh along the normal. And then the minus button is going to push in the opposite direction of the normal. In this case, it means pushing it in. Since these three settings are so often used, especially while in the middle of sculpting, there are some really fast hotkeys for them. For the radius, we just need to hit the F key. So hit F and move your mouse to the left or to the right, and then click again to confirm. For strength, hit Shift F. Drag it all the way to the right, and we get a super strong strength. Shift F, drag to the left, and now it's back in the middle. Then to invert the stroke, to go from plus to minus, we can hold the Control key. So by default, it's pushing outwards. Then I can hold Control, and then if I draw while I'm holding Control, it'll push inwards. I'll hit Control Z and undo a bunch of these strokes, just so we have more of the original sphere to work with, and we can try out some of these other tools as well. We've got the Draw Sharp tool, which by default is going to push inwards, give us some nice creases. We've got the Clay tool, which is similar to the Draw tool, but you'll notice that it layers on a lot smoother, but it also has a little bit of a harsher edge right along the outside. This is a great way to build up forms. Feels very organic. And then there's also the Clay Strips tool, which is really fun for roughly blocking out shapes in a much more harsh way. And it really has a nice raw feel to it. So you can just carve out your shapes. There are a ton of tools, so we don't have time to go through all of them. A really important one though is the Smooth tool. So if we make a really harsh edge here and we just paint over it with the Smooth tool, then it'll just soften those vertices or relax them. This one's super common to use as well, so there's a hotkey to get to it from any other tool. If we're in some other tool, let's just say we're using the blob tool, making our blobs, and we want to smooth these out, well, we can just hold the shift key and use the smooth tool at the same time. So instead of switching to the smooth tool and switching back, we can just hold shift. I'd recommend taking some time and playing around with these brushes, but one that I want to show you right away just for fun is the cloth brush here towards the bottom. If we click and drag on our mesh now, then it'll run a real-time cloth simulation in the direction of our stroke. Maybe don't make the radius too big, otherwise it'll be a little bit slow. But go ahead and wrinkle up your default sphere here. You probably won't need to use this one right away, but I think it's a great example of how powerful brushes in Blender can be. It's also just really fun to work with. Okay, once you're done with that, let's look at creating a basic project. Let's start over by going to File, New, and Sculpting again. I'll drag out my toolbar one more time. And for a super basic example, let's make an apple. We could start with our draw tool and try to draw out a shape and make this look more like an apple. Um, we could you know, try to make a hole in the center and build up around that and 
whatnot, but that's gonna be a little bit more tedious than what we want to do, and we'll probably end up with something a little bit too lumpy. So instead, let's just try shaping it with some grab tools. We could go down to the grab tool itself, use a really large radius, and I'm just in front view now. We can grab portions of our mesh here. But the one downside of this is that it stops at a pretty harsh line right around the edges of the grab brush. Even if we use a pretty soft fall off, it's still not quite as natural as I'd like. So instead, we're gonna use the Elastic Deform Brush, which is another really fun one, and one that's fairly recent. This one will do the same type of grab, but it'll squash and stretch the rest of the mesh to try to keep it in proportion, so we get a much more natural feel. So using this brush, I can push in the sides and bring them up a little bit. Maybe flatten out the bottom, and flatten out the top. And really quickly, we can get a pretty decent apple shape. Once we have something nice from front view, I'll hit 3 to go to side view, and we need to fix it up here as well. I'll bring in the sides. Of course, this doesn't need to be symmetrical or anything. Apples are all shapes and sizes, so whatever yours ends up looking like is probably fine. It can be a nice round one or a tall and skinny one. Alright, then once I have it from front and side view, let's look at it from all different angles. We can see that some areas are kind of flat, so maybe we want to pull those outwards and take the areas that are a little bit too round and push them inwards. I'll just rotate my 3D viewport around, looking at it from as many angles as possible. And there we go. This default gray matte cap is pretty nice, but let's liven it up a little bit by going to a red one. I'll use the drop down arrow for the solid shaded options, and under matte cap, which it's set to by default in the sculpting start file, I'll just choose the red one in the middle left. A lot of people like this one for sculpting, a lot of people hate it, it's really up to you, but for now I think it looks good for an apple. Okay, once we have a shape that we'd like, let's push in the top and the bottom. To do that, I can just grab the top and pull it downwards, but that's going to give us the wrong shape here, so let's change that. First, I'll switch to the grab tool, so that we're not squashing and stretching the rest of the mesh. This will give us a bit better of a result, but it'll still be a little bit too smooth. It's influencing too much over here. I'd rather it pull it all the way down in the center, but have a more gradual ease out and round out the top. So for that we can change the fall off. And we haven't really talked about fall offs quite yet, so let me go over to the draw tool just to introduce the idea. Right now if we use the draw tool, actually let me turn the strength all the way up to 1 here, use a smaller brush, and if I make a stroke, then you can see that it starts out kind of at the top and it eases in to the stroke and then it eases out towards the end. So that's because the fall off is set to smooth. But we could also set it to any one of these other falloffs. If I set it to constant, then you can see it's even all the way across until it hits the end. And so it's going to be very harsh. We could also set it to any one of these others. But I'll set it back to smooth for now. Go back to my grab brush. And for this one, instead of going to smooth, I'll choose sharp. Now you can see that when I grab this, it's going to be a lot more pointy. So now I'll look at this from the side, and I'll try to grab this right in the middle, and just pull it straight down. And I think that worked, but my brush wasn't quite big enough, so I'll increase my size of my brush a little bit. Again, try to grab that right in the middle, and pull it straight down. And there we go, we gave ourselves a nice apple core. Let's do the same thing towards the bottom. I might want to scale my brush down a little bit, and let's look at it from front view, tilt downwards just a little bit so we can actually see the bottom, and just pull this straight upwards. And it looks like we were off base just a little bit, so I can always grab this and pull it back in towards the middle. Alright, so now we're almost there. Now this is looking pretty good, but I think we could use to make it a little bit more lumpy on the top and the bottom. So for that I'll go back to my clay tool. And for this one, I'll use a pretty big brush because I don't want it to get too lumpy. I just want to make some, you know, larger, larger bumps here. And then I'll use a really small strength because if I use a big strength, then it's going to be way too much. But if I use a nice subtle strength, then I can just build up some clay in some of these areas. Maybe a little bit more than that. And I'll just kind of randomize the part that goes up around the top. So we have some peaks and some valleys, but it's still pretty subtle. 
Then towards the middle, I'll hold shift and smooth this back out. So it'll be more lumpy towards the top, and then it'll just smooth out to the rest of the apple below that. All right, so draw some layers and smooth it out. Okay, let's do that same thing towards the bottom, but this one will be a little bit more extreme. So I'll increase my brush size and brush strength and just layer on some clay here to give it the look of the little ridges at the bottom. Then I'll hold shift and smooth this out into the rest of the apple. Then if we really want to define this further, then we could use the crease tool. Let's switch over to that and let's use a pretty small brush here. And just draw a couple creases coming from the core out to the sides and then smooth that out just a little bit. Just help define those little ridges even more. So again, draw and smooth, draw and smooth. Okay, then we can take a step back and look and see if there are any other places that we need to smooth out a little bit more. For that, I'll use a pretty big brush and go to my smooth tool itself. That way I can control the strength. And use a bit lower of a strength and just smooth this out overall. Okay, and then it looks like I made one side a little bit taller than the other. If I go into side view, and that's pretty easy to fix because we can always go back to our elastic deform tool and move this back into place. So let's do any last touch ups that we want to here. Let's go to front view, make sure it looks good there. And again, just orbit the model, go all the way around, make any last adjustments. And finally, before we call this finished, let's make a quick stem. Let's head to object mode, go to front view, and I'll just do this as a new object. So I'll hit shift A, mesh and circle, and we can't really see it. So let's hit Z and go to wireframe view. And we definitely don't need that many vertices. So in the redo panel, I'll set this down to six. Then I'll hit tab to go to edit mode, one to go to front view, move this up with G, scale it down with S. So it's coming right out of the center. Then I'll go to top view to make sure it is in that center there. Make sure it's right there from front and side view. And then hit E to extrude, pull this upwards, rotate it, E to extrude again, rotate it, and E to extrude again. There we go. So now let's go ahead and smooth this out a little bit. I'll go to the modifiers tab, add modifier, subdivision surface, and crank this up to two, and then right click and shade smooth. Now the shading is gonna look a little bit weird, and that's because it's backwards. The faces are pointing in the wrong direction. And we can see that if we go to our overlays and turn on face orientation, the whole stem is red. So let's hit tab to go into edit mode, Select everything with A. This sometimes happens when we extrude geometry from just simple circles or planes. And then we can go to Mesh, Normals, and Recalculate Outside, or use the hotkey Shift-N. Now we're almost done, we just need to fill in this front here. So let's select all of those vertices and just hit F to fill. To sharpen it up, we can add another edge loop with Control-R, slide that up. And then let's make the rest of the stem a little bit thinner. So I'll select the edge loops that go around it. Right now I double clicked because I'm using emulate three button mouse, but if you're not using that setting, then you can alt left click. All right, then I'll hit tab to go to object mode. And here we have a basic apple and it's still shaded flat. So let's right click and shade smooth. With that, you have your first organic shape. If you're coming from another app like ZBrush and you're already familiar with sculpting and you just want to get up and running in Blender, there are just a couple features that you'll probably need to know about right out of the gate. So to demonstrate those, I'll go ahead and hide my apple and the stem. And actually I should probably rename those just to be nice. 
and let's add a cube. Shift A, Mesh, and Cube. And let's jump over into Sculpt Mode. Right now, we can only push and pull the existing vertices. So I can, of course, grab these and move them around. But that's about it. What I can draw is determined by what vertices I have already. But Blender can also create topology on the fly. For that, you need to enable Dynamic Topology up here in the top right. It's a little checkbox, and it's an entirely different mode of sculpting. When you turn that on, it'll give you a warning that it's going to not preserve vertex colors, UVs, or other custom data. But that's fine, we're just using a default cube, so I'll click OK. Now if we were to use a regular brush, let's just say like our clay brush, we can draw right on our surface, and we can create geometry where it wasn't existing before. This looks pretty cool, especially if we're in wireframe view. We can actually see the geometry being created as we go. So the further we zoom into an object, the more detail we'll have. And you can see that the detail is relative to how zoomed in we are. We can change this behavior in the dropdown. Right now it's set to relative detail, but we can also set it to constant detail. And now it'll be the same level no matter how zoomed in we are. So we can change that size here. Let's change that to one. Let's change that to five. And you get the idea. I'll hit Control Z and undo all of that. And instead of using dynamic topology, you could also use remeshing. So I've Control Z'd my way all the way out of dynamic topology, and that's now off. And if we wanted to add geometry using a different method, we could go to remesh, set the voxel size, and then just click remesh. Here you can see it's completely regenerated the topology of our cube. Let's say we really stretched this out somewhere. I'll just go and grab my grab tool and pull out one of these sides. Something just really extreme, so we have it's really sparse geometry. If I go to solid view, you can see how rough that looks. Well, if we wanted to remesh this so we can continue sculpting on it and get some of that detail back, we could go to remesh, remesh, and now you can see that it's just regenerated the topology as nice even quads. So this is great and works pretty fast. The last workflow of adding topology is with the multi-resolution modifier. So that's how you can sculpt in levels in Blender. I'll control Z my way all the way back here until we have just the basic cube. And then let's go to the modifiers tab, add modifier and multi-resolution. Then when we click subdivide, it's going to add a new level, which is like adding a subdivision surface modifier, but this one is designed specifically for sculpting. So now I can push and pull these new vertices here, but I can also jump up or down a level. So if I go to sculpt level zero, I can go back to pushing or pulling those original vertices, or I can go up a level back to where I was. I'll go into solid view now and click subdivide again to add another level. And you'll notice that as I rotate around, it kind of reduces the levels then pops back out. And this is just a viewport optimization so that you can always navigate really fast, even if you have millions of polygons. So if you're going to be working with really high poly counts, you'll definitely want to get familiar with the multi-resolution modifier. Here I can sculpt on this level, go back down to level one, sculpt on that one, go back down to level zero, change these vertices, and just go back and forth. As a general rule, you probably don't want to make extreme changes to lower levels of detail, but go ahead and try it out. If we go over to object mode, then we'll jump back to zero because that's what it's set to in the viewport, but we can always turn that up or turn that down. As a beginner, these are not necessarily things that you need to know right out of the gate, but if you're coming from another software, you'll probably want to jump right into these tools. There's a lot more we could talk about when it comes to sculpting, and we don't really have the time for that now, but we have a ton of sculpting courses over on CG Cookie, all the way from your very first intro project, all the way to sculpting hyper-realistic human faces. If this is something you're interested in exploring more, I would definitely recommend checking out our library. And well, that's all the time we have for this intro course to Blender. For now though, go ahead and try out some of these sculpting tools for yourself, and just have fun with it. You can make your apple wrinkly, or chiseled, or have lots of blobs, or turn it into a tomato. Just mess around, and then whenever you're ready, head over to the next lesson.